Don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe and do consider supporting the channel via PayPal or Patreon. You'll find the links in the video description. The Russian Grandmaster Yuri Averbach turned 100 years of age earlier in the year in February. Sadly, he died a few months after that. And, and I wanted to uh, celebrate his life uh, with uh, these, these videos. I, the previous video I showed the Averbach system against the King's Indian. Um, in this video, I'd like to show you a game that I played against him. Played in New York in 1990 in, in a closed tournament, round robin tournament. And this is an insane game, I've got to say. Um, I got to know uh, Yuri Averbach a, a little bit during the tournament. Um, I, I really enjoyed his company. Uh, he was urbane, he was well travelled, he spoke pretty good English. He was a principal man, uh, but he was also friendly. Uh, we talked quite a bit about his theory about different types of chess players, different categories of chess players. So there are artists, killers, game players, um, researchers, for example. Um, he regarded himself as a researcher. You know, he he loved studying the game, whether it was openings or end games. Um, and so he said he didn't feel as though he had that killer instinct that characterised players such as Kasparov and Carlsen. Of course, most players are a mix of these categories. There were actually a couple more, which I can't quite recall at the moment. Um, he was 68 years old at the time of this tournament, but he was in good shape, mentally and physically. Um, he said that back home in Moscow, he would swim every day without fail. And he looked good on it. Um, you know, mens sana in corpore sano. Uh, he was a tall man with, you know, a straight back and a, and a proud bearing, uh, but fundamentally sympathetic. You know, I, I, I enjoyed his company very much. Very interesting guy. So here we go. Let's crack on with the game. So uh, Averbach playing white. And I was determined to try and shake things up in this game. You know, I didn't want to get into some kind of strategic battle where he could quite possibly just outplay me with his experience. You know, I really wanted to get some kind of double-edged position. So, you know, I abandoned my my usual Queen's Gambit declined or a Catalan with black um, and Kingside Fianchetto and, you know, I wanted to play some kind of Bononi system, but... Well, Averbach was determined to try and play solidly. And, of course, as black, one could just take here and play d5 and, you know, you get a symmetrical position. Again, I thought, thought that just kind of played into his hands. So I wanted to kind of improvise a bit. Um, I wanted to keep the tension. So I played queen c7 just to protect that pawn. Um, I don't quite believe this move, but... Yeah, I was just wanted to keep keep tension in the position. Funny thing is, after the game, um, this wasn't a surprise for him. This move, Queen C7. He said, "Oh yeah, I last looked at this position in 1963. That was the year I was born." <laughs> so he just put everything into context, and you know the kind of experience that he had. Um, he played Knight A3 here. It's it's a good move. It's a very good move. I mean it. Just one little trick. If if white plays e4 here, then actually it's possible for black to take here because uh, of queen takes bishop, queen takes bishop. So in playing knight a3, obviously that means the rook is now protecting the bishop, so that rules out any tricks. And the knight can be very useful, potentially coming to b5 to hit the queen or later on but perhaps coming to c4. So knight a3, very reasonable move. Time for development, knight f6. And e4, so he just sees the centre in, in classical style. And frankly, you know, I would far rather play white in this position. But anyway, all the pieces are on the board. And, well, you know, I've got some kind of position with black. And here I played knight c6. Um, it's a pretty dubious move. But I just wanted to provoke him, basically. 
Uh, I could play e5 here, knight d7, also not, not a disaster, but knight c6 is just a bit too provocative. And principal man, he pushed on and seized some space in the centre. And here I don't really like my next move either. Uh, I played knight e5, which is, again, highly provocative. I mean, I knew what I was doing. I just wanted some tense position where I was hoping to kind of, you know, befuddle him, you know, in, the, in his old age. But <laughs> it was uh, not a good decision. I could play knight a5. Even knight b8 is better than knight e5. And, yeah, Averbach was a principal guy. He, why not just push this knight back? And he seized complete control of the middle of the board. So he's just got this massive space advantage now. Uh, and I've just lost so many tempi in this position. <laughs> it's a joke, actually. A6. So the only thing I can do is to try and just break things open. Desperately get some counterplay before I'm just rolled over in the middle of the board. Knight c3 is very nice. So um, he's... In playing knight a3, actually, knight, the, the knight on a3 doesn't stand badly because it looks at these important squares. And actually, there's room for this knight to come over to c3. So, you know, it's not on such a great square on e2, but on e c3 it's much better. So rook b8, you know, I'm looking to break with b5. I, I guess I could have played b5 straight away, but anyway. Rook e1, so now he's almost ready to push with e5. Um, there are certain tricks on this diagonal, so I've got to be really careful if, if potentially a bishop comes here. So I had to strike out. It's my only chance in this position. So b5. Here we go. And of course, with the knights here, he can safely take a pawn, which he did. So... Taking here doesn't do me much good at the moment. I guess I could have, but I played c4 because I just wanted to open up that diagonal towards the king. So I've got some activity, but it, it isn't great. Because basically white is, you know, has this wonderful space and is very well coordinated. And he struck straight away with e5. Like I said, he's a principal guy. You know, if he thinks he can push forward and, and roll roll black away well why not and probably i should just drop the knight back here actually but i took it i just wanted to open things up pawn takes pawn and now if knight takes then he can take here and play bishop f4 and that's the trick that i was mentioned earlier that skewer wins material so after f takes knight e8 so I've sort of got what I want <laughs> in the sense that I've sort of destabilized his center. He's still got to develop his queen side as well. But he played excellently. d6, just pushing through the middle. Pawn takes pawn. And now he recaptured here, which is pretty decent. Could also go knight d5, but e takes is good. And here I've got problems. Um, if knight d6, again, bishop f4 is pretty disastrous. If queen takes, uh, this doesn't look very good. I mean, this is just <laughs> massive for white. <laughs> look, at, look at white's pieces. I mean, this is an absolute picture of coordination. Um, and white is even a pawn up here for his troubles. So anyway, I kind of blundered on and played queen d8. And he played knight d5. He could have could have taken on a6 first, actually. Could have taken here first. But it's interesting, isn't it, how vigorously he's playing the position. You know, there's, there's just no fear here at all. He's seen it all. And it looks like he's going to crush me. So I took here, and he checked, and he flipped back with the knight. 
hitting the queen and the rook. So what's the material? Yeah, for this glorious position, uh, white hasn't even sacrificed anything at all. Queen b6, check. Okay, it's a glimmer of hope, but bishop b3 is a good move. Gaining your tempo. Now here, well, okay, I'll hand it over to you. How would you play here if you had white? So I will say cheers. I've got a queen in Siberia. I've got a queen in Siberia mug. There we are, if you can see that. Available from the Teespring store. Um, cheers. White to play, what would you do? The queen does not look good. Well, here, Averbach decided to cash in, and he took the rook. And it's a good move. But after that, I thought, I've got a glimmer of hope. I think it would have been much more unpleasant for me if he'd just brought the knight back to c2. And he can always support that knight on c6 with knight b4. And it's just very hard to find any activity. Well, there's that splendid octopus on c6. But he cashed in. I mean, it's still miserable for black. And basically, I think he wanted to just keep it very simple. He just wants to exchange pieces. He's, you know, met or neutralised that bishop on g7 with bishop d4. He's still got that pawn on d6. I mean, if, you know, I allow the bishops to be exchanged, if I remove that pawn on d6, which is a strong pawn, for example, after this, I mean, this is the kind of thing that he was obviously looking to play and then bring the knight back. I mean, this is absolutely crushing. There's no way that I can allow the exchange of bishops, even though black has a pawn for the exchange here. I mean, it's quite clear that with this knight heading in, it is absolutely curtains for black in that position. I had to keep the bishops on. Even if it meant, for the moment, well, I've just got to live with that pawn. It's my, my only chance to keep things complicated with knight f6. I mean, there are lots of ways that white can play. He, uh, Averbach played rook f1. Hitting the knight. Again, I just cannot allow uh, the bishops to be exchanged. So I blocked with bishop f5. And... Black has almost coordinated, and you know, that knight might come to d7, and then on a good day, I might be able to put that bishop on d3. So you can see how you know I was getting a little bit optimistic here. But it, and very interesting to see how uh, Averbach played now. Again, it's all it's very straightforward, very forcing. He exchanged on f6 and went g4. So he's looking to, to, yeah, not letting black settle. But actually, things are not so clear now. So he took on f5. I took on a3. So white is still the exchange up. I guess he was hoping to sort of break through to the king, but it's really actually very unclear now. He exchanged... And if d7, this is important, I've got queen a7 check. And then queen takes d7. And actually black is all right there because that bishop and the pawn combine very nicely. So he played rook b1. So it's interesting that, you know, finally, you know, my idea of c4, just to open up the diagonal to the king, well, it's kind of come, come good in the end. Knight d7, huge relief to blockade that pawn. And you can see how things have turned. And, of course, we were entering time trouble. Good old time trouble. I mean, this was kind of the, the, the kind of position I actually was aiming for, you know, right from the start. Something a bit random. I've given up material, but here, you know, this is, it's looking pretty unclear, actually. Queen c5, check. And bishop d4. So I've still got that fantastic dark square bishop. By some miracle, I've managed to actually get a couple of very nice pawns 
on the queen side. That pawn is going nowhere. White's king is lacking protection. Now here I played knight to e5. Um, I mean, I didn't play this accurately. Knight e5 looked good. I mean, I just I seem to recall just throwing it in there because it, you know, it might come here, it might come to d3. But c3 would actually really tie white down uh, because the queen, obviously, the queen can't really move. That that pawn would be advanced. Looks pretty good. Anyway, knight e5 played, and I threw the knight in to d3, and obviously the, the, the bishop is attacked. But after this, well, that simplifies the position. Uh, he should play d7 here, actually, but he took on d3. And I took here. Rook d1, rook d8. So now what's the score? In fact, material is level. This is move 38. I, the time control was at move 40. So we, we both kind of breathed a huge sigh of relief. But I can tell you, I think uh, he must have been incredibly disappointed with this position. Um, because, you know, he, he's basically blown a winning position. Yeah, and if, if this is taken, then, you know, I thought that I can still get some attack here against the king. You know, here and on the back rank as well. You know, that's not an easy position for white to defend. So rook f1. And here I made a big mistake. I should play f5. And, you know, black has, uh, well, some chances to win this position. You know, perhaps that rook can swing over here. Um, you know, maybe down here, there's chances to attack. I think that would be difficult to defend, actually. But I play rook d7, you know, it's a bit timid. And, yeah, queen b5, I think, must have just overlooked. Tax lots of pieces, don't know how I could overlook a move like that. Maybe I was still blitzing, I mean, maybe I hadn't recorded the moves properly. Anyway, um... That holds everything together, but after bishop c6, it's problematic. Threatening the rook, threatening this bishop. Bishop c7, threatens mate. Whoops, here. Queen b2 check, and of course, that covers h2. I mean, maybe that's the move I overlooked. I just simply can't remember. And here, if the king goes back, then of course, that can be taken. So I had to play... Queen d4. And now the position is burning out. So queens are going to have to be exchanged. And here we agree to draw, which I think in this position is absolutely fair. Uh, so an absolutely insane game. Uh, and my, my tactics of you know just striving for complications sort of paid off in the end. I actually reached around here a very, very strong position. But yeah, I couldn't quite control it in the end. Um, but I have to say, I really enjoyed that game and I'm, I'm really glad that I, I went for him. Uh, and, you know, I think his earlier moves, you know, up to sort of round about this point, were perfect and you know it just showed what a class act he is in in absolutely demolishing my my very very dubious opening so there we go um yeah yuri alfbach a a, a a very nice man actually i have to say um you know met him on on quite a few occasions and i, and I really liked him he was friendly very sympathetic fund fundamentally um and such incredible experience in the chess world. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.